this 42 year old dental phobic patient was referred to us for endodontic treatment of tooth number 14. Patient admits that her dental phobia is so bad that she hasn't seen a dentist for many years. Also, she would have to take Xanax just to get herself out of out of the house. Uh, of course, her husband drives her out of her house to go see a dentist. So this tooth, tooth number 14, right now has a temporary crown on it. And uh, you can see there's a periperiolucency also associated with the tooth. So the patient didn't even let me look at her mouth, examine her. So basically she came in and all we could do was take x-rays. And these x-rays, according to the patient, were very um, painful for her to even allow us to take these x-rays due to her extreme severe dental phobia. So as you can see, tooth number 14 is very calcified as well. Look at the canals and how calcified the canals are. Anyways, we discussed options with the patient and her husband and she definitely wanted to try to save, save her, her tooth. So. Um, she knew about sedation. We do sedation, of course. So today we scheduled her for IV sedation. She came in and we IV sedated her and did this root canal for her. But just to let you know, I we could barely even fit a child-sized bite block in her mouth. So her opening was this much. Like maybe an inch. Maybe an inch and a half opening also we couldn't really open her mouth much we couldn't really put pressure on her on her teeth because she has perio disease and all, most of her teeth especially the lower anterior ones have miller class 3 mobility take a look look at her lower anterior teeth this is all food and calculus Supra gingival calculus, look at all of that. So these were so loose, as I said, Miller class three mobility. We couldn't, we couldn't uh, open her. We couldn't use even a mouth prop to open her because her teeth were so loose. Okay. Tooth number 14 was, was n n not as loose, but uh, could still be, be safe. But look at these teeth here. As I said, the lower anterior teeth, you really, you could, you could blow air on them and, and they would they would move, they would shake and vibrate. Anyways, so as I said, her opening was this much, maybe an inch and a half. And take a look, look at the pole stop. Here's the pole stop. We were able to do the root canal. <laughs> and look at that beautiful lateral right into the lesion there, lateral lesion there, look at the curvature of these canals so as you can see everything went great we went ahead and temporized the tooth and referred the patient back to our dentist i wrote a detailed report to our dentist and uh, let her let the, let her dentist know how how poor her oral hygiene is uh, patient's oral hygiene is and how desperately this patient needs uh, a deep cleaning a, a perio uh, a, a, a referral to a periodontist as soon as possible uh, but uh, as you saw, definitely, um, she has, um, but unfortunately, her the, the dental phobia uh, has crippled her. I just, uh, uh, she cannot convince herself she cannot go see a dentist. It's completely understandable uh, for the patient. Um, she just can't do it. She has dental phobia, extreme dental phobia, PTSD, dental phobia. So... It's very difficult for these patients to seek dental care unless unless um, they have such a bad toothache that they, they just have to. And in this case, that was that was the reason she had gone to her dentist because of pain, severe pain associated with tooth number 14. She said otherwise she wouldn't have gone. She would not have gone to the dentist. So as I said, as you can see, everything went beautifully. Nice lateral right into that lesion there. And as I said, we temporized the tooth and refer the patient back to our dentist for the permanent restoration.